Welcome to the latest Podfluencer Weekly. And as I sit here recording this video, I am staring down my 50th birthday, one month from today, the date of recording this video and publishing this newsletter. It's almost impossible at a significant life milestone to not think about where you are, where you hope you'd be, where you still want to go. And I don't even feel so much like now that 50 is even considered to be so old these days, but that could be confirmation bias. In fact, it probably is. I've been considering things that didn't work out in my life, mainly the professional side of things and wondering what my life could be like if I'd started out earlier or had clarity sooner on those sorts of things, or if I'd had some wins with the things that I tried out earlier that didn't pay off. The truth is, I'm actually pretty happy with my life these days. And yeah, I'd like to be wealthier. Yes, I'd like to be more successful. And yes, I'd like to be a bigger deal in my own industry than I currently am. But you know what? I'm working on it. I do sometimes stop and think about some of my friends who have not had the opportunity to reach this half century milestone in their lives. And I feel grateful. There really is nowhere I should be. There is just where I am right now. And regardless of mistakes and disappointments throughout my life, my choices are to lament them and throw a 50th birthday pity party or to celebrate where I am and actually have a celebration. Guess which one I'm choosing. We can probably all relate to life milestones, giving us pause to reflect and evaluate. We tend to do it at the end of each year at the end of a relationship, at the end of a job or business or any significant milestone in our life. And if I'm honest with myself, as I do try to be, and consider why I'm not further ahead, not the level that I dreamed of being at just yet, the answer is simple. As singer Kirsty McCall once magnificently sang, you just haven't earned it yet, baby. I could tell myself that I've missed my chance, that I'm too old now, I'm not, it's not going to happen for me, I might as well give up. Or I could tell myself that even if I don't reach the dizzy heights of being known that I would like to get to, I will still do what I can, still keep putting myself out there and still keep doing my best to be helpful and of service to others. Because ultimately, it's not about me, it's about something bigger. Without that something bigger, I think I would have given up already. When it comes to how I can make a difference, I keep finding more and more ways, but my favorite ways by far are being a podcast host, a podcast guest, an event speaker, and a content creator. No, I'm not where I wanted to be yet, but I am on the path, and I know that there's always going to be something more that I want to achieve. But as I look at my life, my podcast is doing okay. I finished writing my first book. I've met and married the love of my life. I live in a beautiful city in Spain. I have wonderful friends. I've traveled the world and I'm achieving more and more all the time. So are you on track or do you feel like your train hasn't really left the station yet? Are you where you want to be or destination unknown? I was reading a post yesterday on LinkedIn about how you really need to have a plan and be committed to putting out good content if you're going to get into podcasting. Well, it's not what I did, but it's pretty good advice. And you don't know what you don't know when you start podcasting, and the learning curve is generally way bigger than most people think. However, I am still a fan of getting started and then figuring it out. But there are exceptions to this, and that one of those would be business related shows that could damage rather than enhance your brand. I don't know what's around the corner, but I am welcoming reaching my half century. 50 Circuits Around the Sun has been pretty good so far, even with all the tough times. I'm focused on how I can help more and make a big difference in the world. And I believe that podcasting is my path to achieving that. And it will be for many others too. I think that this is where new thought leaders are starting to emerge. And I see in the content creator world in general, that there is more creativity, ideas, and insights than you can ever generally find in mainstream media. I've also been thinking a lot about critical thinking skills and how Rolf Stabelli's book, The Art of Thinking Clearly, radically changed my thinking and challenged me to clean up my thinking and confront my own cognitive biases. I plan to have some episodes about this for speaking influence, some of which I have already lined up. Critical thinking, along with understanding of rhetoric, are key to being able to see the world more clearly and shake off influences intended to manipulate and polarize us in society. However, right now it seems like a lonely road that most do not want to take. But I know my audience, and I feel sure that you are the kind of person who welcomes challenge and believes that we should not just accept everything we're told as true. 
I listened to a podcast this morning where someone who I've been learning from for many years was talking about logical fallacies. It seemed like good timing because it was already on my mind. And although it was a business and marketing podcast, I, I listened in. As interesting as the discussion was, and the guest was bringing up logical fallacies and critical thinking errors, he was himself guilty of some logical fallacies like poisoning the well, straw man arguments, and ad hominem attacks. Now, don't worry if you don't know what all of those mean, but they really just highlight that without an understanding of critical thinking and logical fallacies, we can't always recognize them when people use them. And even when we know them, we are still highly susceptible to them. We should all aim to be better thinkers and to challenge our own biases and fallacious thinking as well as that of others. We should all aim to be better thinkers and to challenge our own biases and fallacious thinking as well as that of others. This doesn't mean that we're all going to agree on everything, but it does mean that we can start to have more considered conversations that come from our own interpretations of the world rather than the narratives that we are fed on a daily basis from multiple sources, mainly in the media. Some of these things are addressed in a recent podcast episode for Speaking Influence that I recorded with academic Jeremy Sherman, and I hope that you will consider checking that out. The main basis of that discussion was around dealing with our souls, and it was a fascinating chat, if a little spicy in places. I hope you will consider checking it out. If this is an area of interest to you, is there anyone that you would recommend I try to bring on the show to discuss it further? How did I go from evaluating my life to critical thinking? Well, I'm, I'm not sure, but I want to finish up by saying that we should always be challenging ourselves in ways that will help us to continue growing and developing, which generally means more than just completing today's Wordle. And yes, I, I love it too. I plan on challenging myself to do many of the things that people will perhaps tell me that I'm too old to do in my 50s. I plan to keep going on podcasts and keep growing my own show. I plan to publish my book and start writing the next one. I plan to live in our house in the mountains, get dogs and go kayaking most days in the lake. I plan to make a bigger difference in the world. What do you plan to do? How will you be challenging yourself to grow? I'd honestly like to know. So please feel free to respond in the comments or connect with me and message me privately if you prefer. I do want to invite you to check out my recent episodes of Speaking Influence. There's one with Jeremy Sherman and also one with Renee Jones, where we talk about how she uses influence skills to help her clients to lose weight. A very interesting chat with a very delightful guest. Episodes coming up include an interview with the sponsors of the show, Brandface. Michael and Tonya from Brandface graciously gave up some time to come and chat with me and tell me about how they are helping people. We have a very similar mission, which is to empower people to be able to get their message out in the right way to the right audience and to be connecting that in the right way. And they're doing that through branding and marketing. And I'm doing that through teaching influence and persuasion skills and communication skills. So we have very good alignment there and I'm very happy to be working with them. You can also watch this short video that's attached to the newsletter about how to get your free brand face score from them to find out if your brand is actually being perceived in the right way. I encourage you also to keep an eye out for my upcoming episode with Joseph Rosenfeld, where we talk about the style of influence. And that was a fascinating chat with someone who is a professional stylist Primarily, he's been working with people in Silicon Valley. Now he's also working with people in the legal profession and understanding how much of an impact our image and style has on our ability to influence and persuade. So I know you will enjoy that episode as well as the one with the good people from Brandface. Do check those out. I'll be back with another update next week.